Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we're tackling a bunch of stuff on the engine so we can get it ready to go back in the car. So what I'm doing here today is I need to mount, now that I have the engine compartment kind of clean, painted, all that, I need to mount my <laughs> this crazy looking oil setup. Um, kind of looks like one of those droids from the Star Wars movie where they're on the ice planet and the thing kind of pops up. Anyway, um, so what I need to do is basically space this off of my frame, um, conveniently about an inch, which is what I have. Um, I've got this leftover bar stock from one of the previous projects. Um, so I need to cut a four inch section of that. I need to mount this to this and then mount this to my frame. So what I'm going to do, um, because there's not a whole lot of room in here to fit a, a long bolt, um, I need to mount them separately. So what I'll do is I'll cut this, drill it, um, probably do some nut certs in here, and then I'll do nut certs in the frame. So two to the frame, two to this, and then we, we should be all set, but I got to paint this too because it's kind of bare metal and rusty. So I'm going to cut this, get it painted, and then we'll get it mounted up to this and off we go. All right, so got everything completely blasted with the aluminum oxide. Um, didn't really film that because last time I did it, I got aluminum dust all in my camera gear and everything. So we're not doing that anymore. However, I will be filming the painting. So what I'm gonna do here is I have both housings of my turbo, inlet and, and hot side, cold side, hot side. Um, and I'm gonna do those both in Cerakote silver. And then the rest of the stuff is just getting Cerakote black. I don't, it doesn't need to be Cerakoted, but it's seems to be more durable than the um, whatever that paint system I got, the Duplicolor stuff. So we're going to do that and uh, yeah, then we'll have everything coated and can move on specifically with the oil pan. It's the last thing I need to do to button up the engine. So that's been holding me up. So looking forward to getting that over with.
All right, so for the next piece, um, we're gonna take this oil pan, which is all nice and coated. Um, actually need five, seven days to make sure this is fully cured, but I'm gonna be really careful with it and get it mounted on the engine. So what I need to do is I got this new Felpro gasket. This is uh, Fel Felpro 72401. You can look on Amazon, you can read the reviews, but this is, uh, basically it's this O-ring. It replaces this guy on the stock, um, stock oil feed setup. Um, what happens is over time, you kind of see it happen to this one. Um, the outside edge gets flattened and it doesn't seal as well, so you get low oil pressure. So replacing it that one, just cheap insurance. It's like a dollar, two or three. Um, and yeah, so I have this tack welded up from my first initial fitting. So what I'm going to do now is go over to the engine, flip that over, take off my masking paper and everything, get that surface cleaned up, and then we'll actually start to fit this, make sure that it fits correctly. We'll have to weld that all up, we'll have to weld some new brackets to attach that to the bottom of the engine, and then we'll also have to mount our dipstick, make sure we get the, the depth setting correctly and all that. So, a couple things to do, and then we can finally button the engine up for good, hopefully. All right, so I have this all welded up, and as you saw, I filled it up with water. So water levels up here above both of the welds, and we have no leaks, which is amazing. First time, uh, first pass with a MIG. Pretty rare to get a uh, watertight seal, so thumbs up for that. Um, so I'm gonna empty the water out of here, and then we've gotta chop this bracket off and put a new bracket on um, once I get it back mounted on the engine so we figure out where that goes permanently. And that's actually the last piece to this, so on track here.
All right, quick status update here. So the pan is on, um, it's not bolted down, it's not torqued down. Um, I still need to come back and clean all the surfaces, clean the gasket, make sure all that is flush, and also source a few more bolts because um, unlike the stock pan, I don't have a big thing back here, so I don't use those super long skinny bolts that come with the stock pan, so I do have to source some more of those. Um, I'm gonna be a stickler about this and insist that they're also 10 mil, so I can't just throw in some some other bolts that I have, because if you're laying under the car, you'd have to take off the oil pan. You want everything to be the same size. You don't have to go fooling around with different size sockets for, for a single job. So anyway, um, that's what's next. Um, I put this uh, level sensor back in. It kind of interferes with my, um, my pickup tube, which is unfortunate. So I may have to take the pickup tube and just slightly um, bend it in the vise. Not bend, but just crush part of the pipe. Um, to make it a little bit more square versus round where where this touches. But anyway, we'll we'll figure that out um, What else can I say about this? Yep, just uh, That's kind of the last thing For this until we button it up. So I just need to source a few more bolts get everything cleaned up and Get this thing mounted for good and then I've got to tackle my I need to do two things with respect to the dipstick First thing I need to do is come in here. This is my dipstick tube that I made on the pan. Um, I need to put a dipstick in there, at least get it close, and then when I actually fill this up for real with oil, um, we'll do the final dipstick scoring and everything so I know what full really means on the dipstick. Um, but I do wanna get the, the dipstick mounted and see where, my, um, where I need to add a bracket up here. And then the other thing is I've got this stock dipstick hole in the block that I guess I need to pay $12 for that plug for, um, or maybe go to Ace and find something else I can use. But anyway, getting close, this thing's almost buttoned up. So I'm kind of excited because this is just a big milestone getting this thing complete. Um, and then, yeah, then just waiting on a few more things. We're getting there. Okay, so just took the measurement, um, and what this basically told us is that this fifth dot right here, this is going to be the high point. Um, this was, I, I basically aligned the dipstick, this fifth dot, to the height of the water that I put in. And I have six quarts in there, I've got an oil cooler, it's a pretty big system, a lot of, uh, a lot of plumbing and everything, so six quarts is the right amount. Um, so what that tells us is that we need just over, we need about two and three quarters inch of dipstick beyond the tube. Now, because my engine setup came from a express van, I have an excessive amount of dipstick here left to play with. So let's see, that is the dipstick fully, kind of fully seated in the dipstick tube. And I've got a good couple feet past here. So I basically have to come down here, measure two and three quarters here, cut it, probably straighten it out, and then add my own markings onto here that kind of measure or that, that mimic the, the holes at the other end. So I'm just gonna probably measure again. So I measure twice, cut once, and we'll see what we can do with this. And here we go. This is the finished product. So basically just cut that off with some tin snips um, took it over to my vise and slowly just pushed it further and further into the, the vise jaws and clamped it down so I kind of removed what used to look like this. Um, just little by little, it's pretty easy. And then just took this to the grinder and grinded a nice little round edge. So what I have now is something I can basically go back to my oil pan and take another measurement and just kind of eyeball where um, where my high point is and then I'll at least have a, a range for the dipstick and I'll know what's full and I'll know when I need to add a little bit more.
Okay, so there we go. Have five lines scored in here with just an X-Acto blade, used a metal straight edge. And uh, you can actually feel that. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but essentially when the, uh, when the Sharpie wears off, I've got scoring marks, high, low, and then in between. Um, there was really no indication on the original dipstick what that really meant. So basically, you know you're full here, you know you're low here, and you want to be ideally probably on the upper end of that range. Um, so there we go. Next thing I have to do on this is when I get the oil pan finally um, kind of like for real mounted on the block and sealed and all that, I need to come back in and we'll need to make some new mounts for this. Um, this existing stock mount is not in the right place and I'll need to secure it to the block somewhere that kind of threads through my headers and uh, engine mount. So that will be, um, we'll still do that before we put it back in the car, but that might be a few steps away on this project. So finally I have this oil pan on, a few things, because I'm using a sheet metal pan, so first of all, but I haven't said this before, sheet metal pan, probably not the way to go unless this is your only option. Um, if I had to do this over again, I would definitely go with the GTO pan. Um, with the amount of time I have in the fab of this thing and the issues that I have with, with respect to all the hardware and the positioning of the, the various things, total pain in the butt. Um, so a couple things, because my flange on this pan is a lot thinner than the factory pan, some of these bolts bottom out, so I have some washers here to, to space them out where I don't have a, a pass-through. So these are okay because they go right through the block, but in some cases you kind of bottom out. Um, so for the most part I was able to stick with the 10 mils, um, except the back here, well these are also 10 mils, but a smaller thread size because these formerly used to go into the back of the pan, which is really long, so I had long skinny ones there. So found these, gonna use them for now. I might get something better. Um, and because of my remote oil filter, I have to use a non-standard, it's like a, I think it's a 12, 12 mil nut on a stud, which is a total pain. If I ever have to take this thing off under the car, it's gonna be kind of misery. Um, and then 10 mils through here, and that's pretty much it. So. I kind of broke my uh, level gauge or level sender when I was test fitting, so I need to get a new one of those, um, or I might just plug it because I have a dipstick and I can just do that. Um, so anyway, pretty good. Um, we're kind of set here on the bottom end of the engine. We're all buttoned up, um, so I get to flip it back over and continue work on some other stuff. Okay, so just an update on where I'm at here. Um, basically have the headers and my engine uh, mounts on the engine, and the whole point of doing that was, number one, so I can see how it looks, because I want to drop the turbo on here and put some of the plumbing back on to see how it looks on the stand as motivation, but more importantly, um, I need to figure out how I'm going to mount the dipstick. So right now, um, again, this is the stock dipstick. Um, 
that I've modified for the pan. And uh, this isn't how it was bent normally. I, I kind of rebent this when it was still in the car just so it could kind of get in place. Um, so basically I have it going into the pan right there and then coming up here through, I guess this is the, you know, the front two cylinders of the engine on, on the passenger side. And what I need to do is just take this tab off right here. I'm going to cut that off and um, basically cut it to affix to that exhaust stud right there, that guy. Um, and then I'll weld it in place on the tube and it'll be out of the way of that bolt and also out of the way of the spark plug um, for that cylinder. So, yeah, gotta pull the dipstick out, cut off the tab, reposition, and tack in place, and then I'll finish welding on the bench. But, little things, getting there. Alright, little update. So, um, I've just made a small little tab. I actually forgot to record part of it, so it wouldn't have made sense just recording the second half. Um, but basically, this is just a small metal tab that I've bent with the hammer and a vise and just drilled a hole for this exhaust stud. And the way it's going to work is that the uh, dipstick tube is just going to line up right here off the exhaust pipe. Um, it'll clear everything, give me a good clearance to that bolt and uh, go right down to the pan. So I've got a spot down here, uh, grind it off so I can use my ground clamp and I'm just going to tack it in place here and then we'll pull it off and do the finish welding on the bench. Okay, here we are, the finished product. So I've got this tab here. Um, I had to come in and elongate this hole a little bit just to help with getting it on and off. But basically come down here. We are right in the oil pan. I'm gonna have some silicone. It's got an O-ring, but I'm gonna do some silicone in here anyway when I do my final install for it. And uh, just right up here, tab looks good. And this uh, plastic dipstick thing, um, it, this is this will all be heat shielded anyway, so it should be far enough away from all of that to hopefully not melt because I do like the OEM look versus having some polished aluminum low car thing that looks like it never came with any car ever made. Uh, but anyway, that's the I think that's the last piece of the puzzle for the oil pan install. So, like I mentioned, I broke my. Um, my oil level sensor when I put it in there, so I will get a new one of those, but that's the only other remaining thing that I have to do. So oil pan install finalization is complete. So pretty exciting. Probably gonna keep adding stuff, uh, throw the turbo on here, throw the intake on, just to see what it all looks like. But um, yeah, so I think that's it for this episode. Um, next up, we are shifting gear. Ah, pun, super pun. Um, we're shifting gears in the build. We're going to rebuild this, not rebuild, but we're going to add a shift kit to the transmission. So I've got an HD2 kit, which I'm going to partially install, just do the valve body. I'm not going to be drilling anything. And then I've got a Sonax valve, which I will talk about in that video. So yeah, 4 l e for power. I've got my flex plate, SFI approved, Summit Racing, cheapy, and then, um, have actually invested in a, a custom Circle D, um, torque converter. So I'll detail the specs on that when I get it, but up next is our transmission rebuild so that when the torque converter gets here, we can put all this back together, get a drop back in the car, and keep moving on this. So thank you so much for watching. Hit me up in the comments with any questions, and I will see you guys in the next one.